Um, so thank you very much, Tara, for the kind introduction, and thank you also for the invitation to come and speak to you all. There's no PowerPoint. And I'm also trying to find a place where I'm not in such a glare that I'm being blinded. Uh, there's no PowerPoint because I actually don't yet know what I'm going to say to you. And the reason for that is that what I think doesn't work in these talks is that I just stand here and go, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think it's much better if you engage right from the beginning. So we, we, we won't be doing a here's him talking for a bit and then we'll ask questions later. Please interrupt as I go on. We might need a little bit more house light so I can see um, when people want to do so. It is OK to ask questions. It's OK to disagree with me. I won't necessarily be terribly committed about everything I'm going to say myself. Um, so do feel that you can take part. Right, back to the beginning. Oh, no, I'll ask questions. I do ask questions as well. The beginning. So where we started down the path that eventually led to the department getting Athena Swan gold. And I use the word we very thoughtfully because I didn't really do very much other than say, oh, that's a good idea, let's give it a try. Um, and there was a, not only a, a panel of people, a, a, a committee of people who were going to work on this area for us, but in fact, the whole department, and I think that that was what makes the difference. The whole department was brought into this programme right from the beginning. And so I did very, very little myself. It was very we. I should also say, um, I don't think we've got to any kind of destination. You know, this is just the start of what will be a very, very lengthy pro process. Well, probably going on forever. I don't want you to believe at any point that I think I have all the answers and we've implemented all of those at Imperial College. That is not the situation in which we find ourselves. It just happens that we started a few years ago and we've done some good things and they were recognised in um, an award. But that also, let's say, say that, you know, the award, it's, I mean, it's lovely. It's really, really nice to have an Athena Swan Gold Award but ultimately, it is a lump of plastic. The thing that matters is what you do in your workplace to make it a slightly better place tomorrow than it was yesterday. And that's all that we've done. We didn't try and change the world. We didn't try and see what's the great mountain that we have to climb and we have to leap up to it by, to the summit of it by tomorrow. That's not what we did because it wouldn't have worked. What we did was we asked, what can we do today that will make our department, because it was the chemistry department that I'm talking about, a little bit better tomorrow than it was yesterday? And that's always been our approach. But where did it come from? So I became head of department of chemistry, having been director of studies. And we'd had these interminable departmental advisory board uh, meetings where uh, great professors from grand universities would be invited down for the day and we'd all contemplate our navels in the most turgid meetings that you could possibly imagine and at the end of the day go home feeling depressed. And, and I just thought, I'm head of department. I don't have to do this anymore. So I got rid of them. Um, but I didn't get rid of the idea of advice. What I did was I reconstituted our advisory board. And without thinking about it, genu genuinely without thinking about it, I took the first step for me personally um, down um, the idea of diversity as a management tool. And the reason is because I thought, well, wouldn't it be sensible to, rather than invite a whole bunch of people who've got the same experiences that I've got, and can know all the things that I know, wouldn't it be better to invite a panel of people who know something different to the things that I know, and that they would be good people to get advice from? So we invited people from, we're in, in London, so people from the city, um, chemistry department, so di uh, board level directors of um, a, a large 
a petrochemical company, but also a pharmaceutical company, people from government, people from all sorts of different backgrounds. Because a diversity of experience gives you a diversity of ideas, and a diversity of ideas is a good thing when you're taking advice, when you're asking for advice. And so I had my first meeting, and um, I was asked to present to them uh, the department's strategy. So I got up and I gave a PowerPoint presentation, perhaps one of the reasons why I'm not giving a PowerPoint presentation today. I gave a PowerPoint presentation in which I talked about how we were going to be the best chemistry department in Europe and we were going to do nano this and bio that and femto knows what and sat down feeling rather proud of myself at the end of it. And they then said, so what's your business plan? To which I answered, what's one of them? And then the work really started, as this board of people helped the chemistry department develop a business plan for how it was going to be the best chemistry department in Europe. And the first question that they asked was, how would you know? So I'm going to ask you now, how would you know? How would you know if your school, you've got schools here rather than departments, was the best school of, what was it, medicine and biologicals? Um, what the, what would you, what, how would you know if your school was the best one of those in the country, say? I'm looking for hands, that's why I asked for the house lights to go up. Yes. <laughs> right, okay, so, okay, so something about hierarchy and something about external views of you, seeing how the world outside views you, maybe something about that. What else? Oh dear. Ah, oh. here we go. Lots of people would come and want to come and work with you. And that was, in fact, the top answer when we started surveying the staff. So I, I sent the survey out to staff, and I said, you know, how would you know? And, and I banned the answer that you would be somewhere in the league table or that you would be like there. Because that's not the description that I want. I don't, we're not following. We're going to be the leading chemistry department in Europe. We need you to describe it. And the top thing was, it would be the place where the best and, best and brightest chemists wanted to come to work. It would also be the place where the best and brightest chemists wanted to come and study. And it would also be the place where the research funders wanted to spend their money, because we are Imperial College after all. And so then, the next question arose, which is, how well do you think you're doing? And at that time, we had nearly 20 professors, one of whom was a woman. So there were some options before us. The first one is that men are better at doing chemistry than women. Yeah, didn't last long. The other one is that we were not achieving our aim of having the best and brightest chemists come and work with us. Because if we were, that is not what our professoriate would have looked like. There would have been far higher number of women. We wouldn't have all been white. We would have looked different. And so what that did for us was it gave us a reason to act. It wasn't that what we wanted to do as a department was to increase the diversity of the department for its own sake. It was because we believed the lack of diversity was evidence that we were not achieving our aim, which was to be the best chemistry department in Europe. And so we needed to do something about it so that we could achieve our aim of being the best 
chemistry department in Europe. That was our aim. Our aim was not increasing diversity. It was the lack of diversity that was evidence that we were not achieving our aim, and so then it became an important task. And Tara said that about the Athena Swan process. Task. It is about doing things. It is not about sitting around saying, oh, isn't the state of the world a terrible thing, and isn't it all awful? It's about doing things. And so we had to start down that path. And so what did we do? I mean, there's a whole load of stuff that, that you can focus upon. One of which, and, and back then, I think, you know, it was still, you know, it was quite a long while ago now, it was, and it was still necessary to think, oh, go on. So that was. And what, and what is it now? Oh, sorry, that's me. That's me touching my microphone. So it was 2007. I became head of department. So this discussion was reaching this conclusion about a year later, and we currently have seven female professors of chemistry. Um, it took a long time because what we didn't do was go out and recruit a whole bunch of senior women, partly because at that time we didn't have the money to do so. Um, so what we did was we focused very much upon our junior staff, you know, that leaky pipeline at the more junior end, it was fuller. Um, and we very specifically asked the question, why do women leave? Um, and then started saying, well, what can we do to prevent them from wanting to do, not preventing them from doing so, prevent them from wanting to do so. Because the reason that they wanted, it turned out, they wanted to do so, particularly the postdocs, I'll come back to that in a second, was they were looking at this career and saying, that <laughs> And these were very bright, capable, able women. And they were going off to fantastic jobs outside the university because they were very bright, capable women. And what they were not doing was bringing that brightness and those capabilities to our senior staff because they'd already been off by that stage. And so it's a slow process. And because of that, the first, well, I don't know, the first four or five years, if you'd look just at the numbers, the numbers are important. The num I, I'll talk about data if I remember. Uh, but the, the numbers are really important, but they don't tell you the whole story because there is a time lag. And we were working with junior staff and, you know, junior staff that needed to get promoted to senior lecturer and needed to get promoted to reader and needed to get promoted to professor. And so that just, that does take time. But making sure that we were positive about that is what we were doing. And so it looked, at, for the first few years, you'd have kind of thought, if you just looked at numbers, you'd have thought, oh, nothing, nothing's happening there but we were doing the work necessary so that later on the numbers took off. Um, so yeah, so that's the time scale and that's the amount of numerical change. So how, how did I know that they were looking at the career and saying, oh, that looks like Because um, we asked them. Uh, it's as simple as that. And so you might wonder, or you might have noticed that there are a lot of chemistry departments with Athena Swan Awards. And very good Athena Swan Awards, because we've been working at, at it as a subject for a long time. And the reason is that is thanks to the Royal Society of Chemistry. And so they produced two reports a decade ago now. And the first one was looking at that leaky pipeline. You know, where is it that um, along the career path that women leave chemistry? And it turns out that Actually, it was after their PhD, choosing not to become postdocs. There was a huge cliff um, drop. And so then the RSC, having noticed that, they did another report where they did focus groups and things like that. And they, they asked people about the intention. If, if you want to see the report, it is called something like the PhD intentions for chemistry. Um, and it was telling. The, the women and, and the men at the beginning of their PhDs 
in equal proportion wanted to go on to an academic research type career. By the end of their PhD, you know, a huge number of the women had chosen not to. And they were asked why. And it wasn't that the women were having different 